And it starts in chapter 2. First it talks about uh, the poor, clearly the Ebionites. God chose the poor, line 5. Rich in faith, heirs to the kingdom, promise to those who love him. Loving God is piety, the piety commandment. Piety towards God. And the next one is the righteousness commandment, loving your fellow man. Do not blaspheme, etc. But if you, uh, but you should keep the royal law of Scripture, love your neighbor as yourself. That's the righteousness commandment. John taught, Josephus says, piety towards God and righteousness towards your fellow men. Well, there it is, right here, right bango in the letter of James. It's hard to find it, but it's there. And then uh, you look in the scrolls, you'll find it over and over again in all the scroll documents. You look at I already did it. Josephus' uh, definition of essenes, their uh, uh, purity duties and other things are, are 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 listed under piety towards God, and the other duties are listed under righteousness towards your fellow man. So you have it here too in letter of James. But you see, if you are, are showing any partiality towards any uh, persons, you're all you're already uh, lawbreaking. Break your law breaking is in the scrolls. For whoever keeps the whole point but stumble on one small point, he is guilty of all. So James is implying that you even more extreme, and the scrolls are like that too. If you're small, uh, you know. Uh, and later, uh, Jesus is portrayed, or earlier, Jesus is portrayed. Um, not one jot or tittle shall disappear from the law until all these things are accomplished. Jesus says that several, uh, in several. Uh, Environments in the gospel. But if you kill, commit murder, you are lawbreakers. Uh, for judgment without mercy, who is him who doesn't do mercy? My brothers, what good is it if someone says he has faith but does not have works? There's the, there's the famous passage, 14. Can faith save him? Here's the person who claims to be saved by faith. And we know who advocated that position. So this is normally taken as an attack on Paul. Now, whether you agree it is an attack on Paul, is you, you, your decision to make here. Uh, even so, faith, if it does not have works, is dead. Faith without works is dead. We've heard that a hundred times. That is the James position as outlawed and outlaid in the letter of James. There's no anti-Semitism here. But someone will say, you have work, faith and I have works. Show me your faith apart from your works and I will show you my faith from my works. Nice rejoinder. This is polemics here. You believe God is one? No, all the demons do too. Oh, you empty man. Oh, you foolish man. In my book, I show you that in the Habakkuk Pesher, uh, there is an attack on the spouter of lying whose works are of emptiness. Rick in Hebrew, emptiness. And that, to me, is a parallel here. Uh, anyway, oh, you <laughs> foolish man is sometimes translated. Oh, you empty man. 20, this is a famous. Don't you know that faith apart from works is dead? And then he gives a very weak example, I think, about how Abraham was justified by works. That's also in the letter MMT, where the, the recipient of the letter, I go into that in my book, read my book, you'll, you'll get all these things. Um, the recipient of the letter called MMT, Mixat Masea Torah, uh, some works of the Torah, that's what it, that's what the devil that's what the translation is. That's a works, Torah, works oriented letter. <coughs> um, evokes uh, uh, that material about, uh, and Abraham's uh, uh, faith was counted for his righteousness, the same one that Paul evokes in, from Genesis 15 6 in his letters. But that person speaks about Abraham's works counting for his righteousness. In any case, here, uh, James also quotes that. Uh, was not our father declared just by works when he offered his son Isaac? So the only work he can think of for Abraham is the willingness to sacrifice Isaac when Abraham was tested, if you know the whole passage there. That's a pretty weak argument now. But this is polemics. It doesn't mean that it's a great, uh, doesn't mean uh, James is, or the letter, person responsible for the writing the letter of James is a great polemicist or uh, arguer. And maybe Paul's better. He is. Paul's a master. He's a master pharmacist, master rhetorician. Can weave spells. You know, so could a lot of other people I would like to, um, I could cite, which I wouldn't, because you would get angry at me. 
who can weave rhetorical spells around people's minds. That doesn't mean he's right. Great lawyers weave spells, and they're often totally wrong, and so on. So just because a guy is expert at a skill, and that's Paul's upper class training. He's upper class. He's a Roman citizen. He has a, the virtue of a high education for that time. He's been educated clearly by excellent Greek rhetoricians. He said, not a, he's not a fisherman if we can take uh, these people at their word. In any case, he's not a common day laborer. He's not, uh, you know, just a, a Palestinian hick. And that's why I say he's from the Herodian family. And I've gone on to learn about that. I've got an article about it in several places. I've covered in James, the brother of Jesus. I covered at length in the new book why I explained Paul was a Herodian. The best proof of Paul's Herodian uh, um, origins is the, someone pointed out to me even in one of these classes about 15 years ago, the salutations at the end of Romans, which are considered authentic, where Paul sends greetings to his kinsman Herodian, which means in Greek, the littlest Herod. And he calls that person his kinsman, preceded by the household of Aristobulus uh, in Rome. Now, Aristobulus is an Herodian. May not be that Aristobulus, but the point is it perceives a little as Herod. And he, he was Salome's second husband after Philip passed away. She married Aristobulus, who was the son, I think, of um, Herod of Chalcis, he was called. If you look at the genealogy, who was the brother of Agrippa I. Now, I know these mean nothing to you until you start studying the genealogies. But the point is, that was her husband. And uh, they're portrayed on Roman coins. You can see a picture of Salome and, uh, Her and Aristobulus on, Roman, on, on, on their own coins, but in a Roman style with their portraits together. And, <laughs> and the logo above them is, great lovers of Caesar. I believe they were, maybe maybe ligured, literally, maybe only figuratively, I don't know. Uh, not Caesar, the original Caesar, but the present Caesar uh, would be um, Caligula or um, Tiberius or um, uh, Claudius, depending on what the date of those coins are. But, you know, proclaiming yourself a great lover of Caesar tells you where they're coming from uh, on, their, on their coinage. So, um, that's right, and, and their son was called Herod. They had a son called...